At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Register for free today. Attend Low Back Pain on Wednesday, August 14th at 6 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. The information provided on Dr. Tom Rosell Live by Dr. Tom Rosell DC, interview guests, show co-hosts, or substitute hosts is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. It is for general information purposes only. Information from this broadcast should not replace the appropriate consultation and examination process by a licensed physician. Always consult your own physician prior to changing any current medical directive or prescription. This is Dr. Tom Rosell Live on 105.9 FM WMAL. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell. This is Dr. Tom, and I've got another great, interesting program for you, one that is going to include the guys in the world, but, you know, guys and women, because we're going to be talking about low back pain and spinal pain, because I can't limit it to there, as it relates to the density, if you will, of the bones of your body. You know, everybody thinks that women are the one that's become osteoporotic, but not necessarily so. 25% and actually the it goes up just a little bit more than that. I'm rounding down 25% of all spinal fractures and hip breaks and so forth occur in men uh, over the age of 50. You know, you wouldn't think that'd be true. We think that we're tougher and better, and because of our testosterone levels, we, we keep a better solid bone density. But let's talk about that back pain as it relates to bone density issues, both in women and men. So guys, pay attention, and ladies, if they're not there, make sure that they listen to this. And I want to remind you, by the way, this program can be found not only while we're doing it live, which I hope you're listening, but it can also be found on drtomrosell.com uh, website. You go to the podcasts, and they're all there. And then, don't forget, we have our live stream program that we do immediately after this program. And that's, you know, we're going to expand upon the platform a little bit. And we're going to actually add a couple different things to it today. So I want you to make sure that, you know, don't hesitate. Go immediately from our program here on WMAL 105.9 in the Mid-Atlantic area to drtomrosell.com. You can push the button and you'll be able to see this old face and we'll talk about all kinds of things. But today we're going to talk about back pain and the like. So here's the deal. You know, we want to talk about what the deal is with non-mechanical, if you will, non-mechanical causes of low back pain and we can go to infections we can go to uh, bone expansion lesions and tumors and uh, things of that nature that and when we talk about mechanical we're talking about so I want to distinguish these for you a postural misalignment which we're going to talk a little bit about today because you need to distinguish both of those but more importantly what can be done about them you know, if we have back pain or spinal pain that unfortunately may be due to something severe, um, it's called multiple myeloma, that's a bone cancer. Uh, we're going to leave that one alone for today, but we will get into a different times. But just understand, you know, years ago, a multiple myeloma, and we're talking, let's go back a decade ago, maybe 11, 12 years ago. If you were diagnosed with multiple myeloma, your chances of survival were not good. You go maybe six months. Um, as time went on and medical intervention and the drugs that they use are very, uh, they have their symptoms. So we're going to put it, put it that way, put it gently. They're toxic. Uh, now you can get maybe another couple years of life, maybe a little longer, and they're doing some genetic mapping. But there's other ways to handle that. But that's a topic for a different day, a different subject. But let's get into this, the common causes or the uncommon causes, if you will, of lower back pain and again we can talk about infection of the joint cartilage you know what i found out with me and now what kind of infection are we talking about are we talking about bacterial infection maybe we know that intestinal bacterium can infiltrate in the disc and cause a 
ankylosing, a fusion of the spine, and but there's other things that happen as well. So talk about me a little bit. I've been, you know, crazy man and traveling all over the world and uh, involved with every community in the healthcare arena that you can possibly think of. And there was this thing called this viral load, virus. Hmm. No, we're not going to talk about COVID, but viruses have a bad habit of liking to live in the lymphatic tissue, but also in the cartilages of the disc spaces, both of the spine and joint spaces, anywhere, unless your shoulders and your hips and so forth. So these infections, these viral infections, like even like tuberculosis and so forth, can get into the joint spaces and cause all kinds of ugliness and pain and so forth. And I didn't know that until a few years ago when I was sitting at a stoplight. You've heard the the uh, story, if you've been listening to the program, I was rear-ended and suddenly, you know, my head snaps back. The young lady decides to hit me about 55 miles an hour. But the, the, the short end of the long story is that all of a sudden I started locking up and stiffening up and I could move, found out that I had an extraordinarily high level of Epstein-Barr virus. Now, we had a structural trigger, an injury trigger. It could have been a biochemical trigger. It could have been an emotional trigger. But in this case, it was a structural trigger. And it activated that underlying viral pattern. How did it do that? Well, it activated it simply because it knocked out the immune system. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Because the truth is, when it comes to Epstein-Barr, uh, virtually 100% of everybody that's listening to me has an Epstein-Barr load in their body. And we develop a natural immunity to that virus, like every other virus in the world. And we fight it. We keep it away. It's not activated because our body does what it was designed to do, protecting ourselves. Now, in every viral pattern that exists, we have the same capacity to be able to do that. But in this situation, what we're talking about is viruses that get into the joint spaces. And there's a lot of uh, evidence and papers that are being published on some of the, uh, the great sites like PubMed and Frontier and uh, <clears throat> the, the, uh, some of the, the journals outside. I even saw one in uh, chiropractic, or excuse me, in medical economics about six, seven months ago. And they're suggesting perhaps maybe, you know, there's uh, this underlying trigger called a viral load in joint spaces when we start seeing degeneration. But remember, we're talking about the back and we're talking about pain that shows up. So your low back, if you will, is called the lumbar spine. It's five, five bones in your back and then that wedge that it sits on top of is called the sacrum. And it plays, that whole lumbar spine and that wedge plays a crucial, crucial role in supporting the weight of your entire body so you can move around and handle it. So you got all this stuff on it. So, you know, someone's got a little bit more stuff, right? A little bit uh, paid for, if you will, around the waistline and other places of our body that, you know, ends up being much more compromising. But when we have this dull ache, you know, in the hips or the pelvis or the back, all of a sudden we get these zinging muscle spasms or we get sharp tingling pain that starts in your lower back and travels down one or sometimes both legs. Um, and it's continues to increase and it's worse. And when we find that when we get up, we have no support. It's like everything is gone. We do anything. We cough, we sneeze, we bend. And the muscles feel like they're going in, in spasm. You know, we sit on the throne, if you will, uh, the bathroom. And it hurts to do that. Those are all signaling things. There, could it be a strain? Could it be a sprain? Could it be? But what are we talking about today? We're talking about density issues. We're talking about not the herniated disc. We're not talking about the gliding points where they're, they're called the facets. We're not talking about spinal stenosis. We're talking about bone density. There are typically in the early stages of the onset of low back pain due to loss of bone density. There are no symptoms initially until there is. And then what happens, we're in trouble. Now, we can break it down into two subcategories or two major categories and go underneath it. 
uh, one's called osteopenia, okay? Not osteoporosis, that's the next stage, but osteopenia. So what is osteopenia? Osteopenia is the loss of bone density before it becomes osteoporosis. And it can cause all kinds of ugliness and pain patterns and, and so forth. But it's a decrease in the bone mineral density of the vertebrae, of the bones of your back, and yet not enough to get to the next criteria, which we call osteoporosis. Now, it, osteopenia is common, unfortunately, in those of us who are over 50. And it's caused by all kinds of things. It can be caused by lifestyle, meaning you eat all the garbage and you don't put anything back in that is going to rebuild the bone. It can be caused by taking different types of drugs that will cause the bone density to uh, not function the way it's supposed to. So if we were taking drugs, what drugs might that be, you say to me? Well, there are a lot of them. There are things that help regulate uh, you know, blood sugars. And there are also synthetic, what we call gluto glucocorticoids. And what's an example of that? That's called prednisone. That one most of us rec uh, recognize. Drugs that are used for breast cancers, they're called aromatase inhibitors. They can cause loss of bone density. Prostate drugs, guys, that you're taking can also cause it. Why is that? Because, you know, if you're taking a prostate cancer drug, uh, Lupron is the, the one that is the most commonly used. And what Lupron does, it stops the production of your testicular testosterone. And without testosterone, you can't build muscle mass, you can't build bone density, so you begin to lose it. And then the bisphosphonates, we have those kind of things as well. And those are things that keep the, the bone density supposedly in place. Those are things that are used for osteoporosis and osteopenic advanced uh, uh, processes. Now, why is that? It's supposed to keep it there. Well, it keeps the dead tissue, the dead cells in there, and it can cause, it doesn't address why the problem's there to begin with. And then anything that is a, uh, the heart, well, we'll use just the heartburn drugs, okay? So if you drop the acetic acid, or excuse me, the hydrochloric acid from your stomach, you can't absorb any mineral, including calcium or magnesium. So subsequently, you end up doing what? You end up losing your calcium density from your bone. Now, there's tons of others, everything from uh, seizure and mood-altering drugs and blood pressure medications and thyroid replacement. All of those things can cause and lead to osteoporosis. So it's, you know, things that we don't think of, things that our doctors are putting us on because they're trying to help us. Unfortunately, if you really took the time and you went into a website like drugs.com, you would see a host of side effects of many of these drugs, the, the least, not the least of which is the loss of bone density and calcium within your body. So you, can, you have to make a decision. You know, are you want to get, do you want to get your body back to where it should be? Or are you going to let it progress and continue to decrease and degenerate and break down until you have bone fractures and you're bent over, you just slope forward, you can't walk, and now you're gonna end up breaking a hip or you're gonna break a wrist, you're gonna break a shoulder, things of that nature. How many of you drink a lot of soda, you know, like Cokes and Pepsis and Dr. Pepper and Sprites and things like that? Well, if you do, you're getting heavy amounts of, guess what, that fizzy stuff, that phosphorus, you know what that does? That takes the calcium out of your bones. Why? Because your body's trying to save your life. That's why. It saves your life by taking this calcium out of your bones, which is alkalizing, to try to neutralize this acid that you're putting in your system. Your body's doing that as the best defense mechanism, but we keep adding to it. Sugars, sodas, coffee, black teas, fast food, fried foods, alcohol, gluten, additives, preservatives, GMO modified foods, all of these guys can cause a shift increasing the acidity within your system, leading to a decrease, a depletion of bone density. So 
you need to really find out, right? And you don't have to go and get necessarily a bone density test. You can just simply do a urinary calcium challenge and find out how much calcium you're dropping out of your system. There's things like parathyroid problems. Your parathyroid are four little glands that sit behind your thyroid that regulate bone density. Things you're going to hear terms like parathormone and so forth. And that simply is the, the hormone, the, uh, the director, if you will, that tells calcium what to do in your body. So when you have a osteopenic condition, it's important that you take action before it becomes osteoporosis. So what's a person to do? Well, it could be simply because you're not getting enough vitamin D or calcium. We used to think that we used to, have to throw a ton of calcium at people, but what was happening was clogging their arteries. So you have to have the right mixture of vitamin D and magnesium, the right type of calcium. If you're a smoker, you're, you're, you're pointing to an osteopenic, potentially osteoporotic. If you're drinking alcohol on an ongoing basis every day, more than maybe a drink or a glass of wine, you're going to increase your risk. We talked about the corticosteroids, also anticonvulsants. We said a little bit about seizure medications, right? Uh, not getting enough exercise, weight bearing. You know, the only thing, there's a, there's a whole new movement out there. There's a biohack, as they like to call it, that if you threw a weighted vest on your shoulders, start out with 10 pounds, work it up to about 30 pounds over a period of months, 40 pounds over a period of months, and just that, and just go for a walk, nothing more, just a walk you will significantly increase your bone density. And let it, there are many studies out there that show up to about 10 to 12%. That's amazing. So how about something as simple as that? Why don't you start with putting you know, those two-pound ankle wraps on your, your ankles and go for a walk and then increase it, leave those there and put a pound on each wrist. Now you've got what? You've got six pounds. Now start there and go for a walk. Just doing that, by the way, if you're walking every day, and I don't care how fast you walk, just getting out there and move your butt. You know, you're going to find that that will dramatically increase the demand for what we're talking about. Now, you know, when a patient comes in our office and they're complaining of low back pain, based on their age and their history and so forth, I'm going to take a real hard look at certain characteristics, certain factors. You know, is it a woman? Is she postmenopausal? Is she perimenopausal? Is it a guy that you know has gone into two fat syndrome, and or maybe that he's in that andropause stage? Guys, it's the same thing that women go through. You're dropping your testosterone, and your other hormones are are all messed up. So, when you have those presentations, you've got to start looking then at environment. What are they drinking? Are they getting the water from plastics? You know, I'll ask a patient, so how much water do you, do you drink? And they say, a lot. Well, quantify that, please. And they'll tell me, well, maybe I, I get a liter and a half a day. And I'll, if somebody gets that much water, I'm going to say, okay, it may be perfect for them, but it might be a little under. But the next question I ask, which is a differentiating question, is where does the water come from? And they look at me and say, what are you talking about? I said, where does it come from? Do you buy it? Yeah, yeah, I buy it. So you buy it in plastic bottles? And they'll say, yeah. And I'll say, okay, what type of water do you drink? See, the plastic, except for a few different types, releases estrogenics into the water. And that estrogen that goes in is going to cause all kinds of problems. But one of them, because of the imbalance, may be a decrease in bone density. And the, if the water is not completely filtered, it's not coming from, that's a whole different story. You know, you may end up with all kinds of other things that are filtering in that you're consuming. But those questions are important. Do you smoke? Do you drink? You know, what medications are you on? You know, what do you do of anything that's weight bearing? When? What's your age? I ask women, when was the last time that you had a menses? You know, how many years ago was it? Was it, did it stop because it was a natural stopping? How old were the women in your family? that uh, went through the same thing when that happened. And with guys, I ask them about their libido. I ask them about their ED. I ask them about their mental clarity. I ask them about their, their rage patterns. Are they cranking up too fast where they never used to be doing that? All those things, believe it or not, have to do with finger pointing to what may be causing that osteoporosis or that osteopenia leading to what we're calling low back pain 
or spinal pain and so forth. Let's talk a little bit about the postural patterns that are associated with that. A properly aligned spinal system encourages even weight distribution and it minimizes the stress on joint spaces throughout your body. So, you know, by the way, believe it or not, you're not supposed to be standing up. The way the body's designed, you should be walking around like a dog or a lion or a cat or something, but that's not the way we do. We're, we're a weight-bearing person. So, but poor posture can cause uneven distribution of weight on the spine, leading to abnormal bone wear and tear, increasing your risk of loss of bone density. It's true. So if your spinal misalignment is not, not good, you have increased your risk of all So you need to see somebody like me and find out what can be done about it. Look, if you stand up against the wall, you put your heels against the base of the wall, put your butt, bring your shoulders back, and put your head back. That's a normal spinal alignment. Just gently raise the center of your chest, not your shoulders, your center of your chest up to the ceiling, just a little bit, just kind of a little tug. If that's uncomfortable to you, your postural pattern is off and you need to get it squared away. Give a doctor like me a call, call our office at the Result Center for Healing or you know somebody that's nearby you that knows what the heck they're doing when it comes to this and find out what you can do to improve that alignment and find out if the body has the presence of what we call spinal distortion, lovingly subluxation, osteopaths call it a spinal lesion. And we have to make sure that your sitting posture and so forth, after we correct whatever needs to be done, right? So posture causing problems can cause and lead to osteoporosis. So if you're in that, the body's wear and tear mechanism will end up causing that breakdown, that deterioration. So are you slumped forward? Are you bending forward from the waist? Are you twisting the spine to a point of strain? You know, does it, when you bend over and so forth, does it, you're, things like, you know, if you're vacuum cleaning, you're sneezing, you're lifting, but you're always in a bent over position, I promise you, you're putting tremendous amount of stress and strain on your back. Not only are you going to have problems with the structural a piece, but you're also going to cause a loss of bone density or that bone density going into the wrong places. So we're going to talk about things like that and much more on, guess what, August the 14th here at the Roselle Center for Healing in Fairfax. Join us. I'd love to have you here. I'd love to show you what our, uh, you know, what our office looks like and, and answer your questions and have some fun with you. You know, all you need to do to, to make that happen is go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E, rosellecare.com, or simply drtomrosell.com. But if you'd like to do it the old-fashioned way, 703-698-7117. But make sure you do it today. And as always, it's our gift to you because we want you to have the education. We want you to have the information. We want you to be able to help yourself. And if you are of uh, the mind to do something about it, we'll give you that opportunity too. We'll show you what can be done. Listen, there's never, uh, you got to do anything when you come to these classes. We just dump data on you. And some people say it's like, you know, drinking from a fire hose that, that we give so much. But please join us. That's the 14th. Coming up very quickly, very fast. So register today. Make sure you, take, uh, you, ha you make it happen. But I want you to know that osteopenia, osteoporosis can be reversed. You can shift it, but you got to find out what's causing it. And I got to have you as a partner. You have to be willing to make some changes and some shifts in your perhaps lifestyle and in your body strength, your core training and all those things to make this go away, if you will. But it can happen as young as in particularly today's world, the early 30s. We're coming up to that point of the program where I'm going to have to say, join me in just a couple minutes on Dr. Tom Rosell live stream. You go to ageleshealth.livestream, but how you find it, drtomrosell.com, drtomrosell.com, and follow me and tell your friends to follow me on all social media platforms, and we'll get as much information out to you as we possibly can. Remember, I do this ongoing for one reason only. I love you all. Have a great Sunday. Bye. 
Breast cancer is a major health risk to all women. It can silently grow uninterrupted for years. The Thermography Centers of Fairfax reminds all women to conduct monthly and annual breast exams. Consider a thermography scan from the Thermography Centers as an adjunct to your routine breast exams. Digital infrared thermal imaging is safe and non-invasive. For more information and to schedule an appointment, call 703-520-7591 or visit thermographycenters.com. Neuromuscular dentistry is more than just teeth and gums. Temporomandibular joint disorder is a very painful disorder, which only a skilled neuromuscular dentist can diagnose and treat. If you're in pain and suffering from TMJ, call the neuromuscular dentistry experts at Soft Touch Dental Care. Learn more about TMJ and how Dr. Michael Chung DDS has successfully treated patients. Visit softtouchdentalcare.com or call 703-319-6990. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Register for free today. Attend Low Back Pain on Wednesday, August 14th at 6 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. This is Dr. Tom Roselle. After 43 years of practice and over a million patient visits, the Roselle Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. That's rosellecare.com. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care, and you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. Mm. Thank you. 